Hey there. So today I want to talk to you about a few new Hyperledger 1.4 features. And so one of the new features is a new programming model. So they cut down some of the code um, that's needed to actually um, do some of the authentication on the network, such as getting the certificates from the certificate authority. And a lot of and cut down a lot of code and in actually invoking the transactions. So I do think the new programming model is a lot cleaner, and I'm excited to teach you it. And so today I'll go through some of the Hyperledger Fabric samples that are posted online. I'll run and deploy one of those smart contracts, probably the Fabcar smart contract, and we'll deploy it using the VS Code extension, and we'll invoke a few transactions, and we'll just check out some of the new features. So. As a side note, um, before I get into the programming, uh, this year my goal is to do a, a weekly video uh, on blockchain, whether it's Hyperledger Fabric, IBM Blockchain Platform, Ethereum, any sort of blockchain um, related concepts I'm happy to cover. So if you have any suggestions, please go ahead and comment in the on this video and I'll take any um, video suggestions and I'll try to um, come out with those. So um, awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for anyone that does that. and. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, um, so now uh, I'm in the Hyperledger Fabric official documentation. Um, so we're just here checking out what's new in 1.4. Um, so this is kind of the programming model I was talking about earlier. Um, it just, uh, it cuts down a lot of the code. So we can go ahead and check out one of these tutorials to kind of get started. Um, so the tutorial itself is has been really the same um, throughout all the Hyperledger releases, um, but this one does, the code is a little bit different. So the first thing you have to do is you have to download all of the actual um, uh, binaries for Fabric. I've already done that. Um, so uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Um, so you can go ahead and launch the network by doing this start Fabric script. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So in my VS Code extension here, you'll see that um, I have this YouTube, um, I have this YouTube directory, and in here I have my Fabric samples. And the first thing we have in our Fabric samples, um, I believe, in Fabcar, is we have this Start Fabric script. Um, so this is going to actually um, do some commands on the Docker containers to actually start them. Um, so I believe this one is chain code install, chain code instantiate, and then invoke. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, run that script now. So we'll go into Fabric Samples, and then we'll go into Fabcar, and then... Okay, so we'll do Start Fabric uh, JavaScript. Um, so I believe you could do TypeScript as well. So at this point, um, it's going to... Um, this script is going to... Um, stop all my running containers right now. So I believe I had some containers running from uh, before when I was doing some other samples. So now it's going to stop all my containers and then it will restart and um, rerun all my containers. So you can see here we're, um, if you look up here, we're creating the CouchDB, Orderer, Certificate, certificate Authority, and uh, the Peer as well. And then we're doing those commands that we talked about before, where we're actually instantiating the channel, and we're actually um, installing, instantiating, and then invoking the chain code. Okay, cool. Um, so at this point, um, we've kind of at least uh, got the network running. So if we go to Dr. PS, we should be able to see that network. Um, so this is what we have a few seconds ago. Um, you can see we have the certificate authority, the orderer, the couch to be, the peer, um, and then this is actually the chain code that is installed on the peer. So you can see Fabcar 1.0, that's the actual chain code, and this is the container running the chain code. Okay, um, so that was pretty cool. Um, let's actually go ahead and go into the enroll admin script. So you can see it's only 47 lines of code, which is pretty awesome. So at this point, um, what this script does is it looks into our basic network, and it's going to find these uh, endpoints to connect to the certificate authority. The So we can go ahead and actually check that out. Um, so basic network and then connection.json. So it's going to look for the certificate authority. Um, so it'll connect to this URL. It'll connect to this URL for the peer and then this for the order. So we can go ahead and check, uh, not, that, not that one, um, but enroll admin. Um, yeah, so... So basically, we're going to check for the certificate authority URL. 
Um, we'll grab that and then we'll use that um, cer certificate authority URL um, to actually enroll. Um, so basically we have, we got the URL and then we create a new instance uh, passing in that URL. And then with that instance, we can call the enroll um, API, which will actually create this um, enrollment key. Um, so it has a certificate and then it has a key. So you'll see that the, that's what that comes out of. Um, and then that's when we have this identity and then this identity will be put into our wallet. You can see right now there's nothing in our wallet. So um, let's go ahead and create that identity. It'll, it'll be a public private key pair. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll run node and roll admin. Um, okay, we have to go in the JavaScript directory and then now we can do node and roll admin. And then now this should populate our um, wallet with this admin credential. You'll see the private key, the public key, and then this is the actual certificate. Um, this is where you can find extra information on um, the identity, such as who actually, so the signing identity is a certificate authority that actually um, created this admin credential. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so we've done that. Um, the next thing we want to do, we can kind of look through the, um, so we'll probably want to run npm install as well. Um, install. Um, and then, so after that, we've created the admin user. We want to actually create a another user. So we want to create a client user that's going to actually be invoking the transactions. So we'll do that in this register user script. Um, and and if you notice, this will be pretty similar. Like if we if we check this code for um, not 1.4, but we can check I don't know like 1.2. So if we if we're still on the writing the first app, you can see that the code is pretty different. Um, so if we go to Fabric Samples online, um, so and if we check uh, 1.2, you'll see that the code is pretty. I mean, it's it's doing the same thing, but it is more complex, and there's there are more lines of code. So we can check that right now. Um, yeah, so you, you can see it almost cut it down by by a half, um, and but it is still doing the same thing. Like we're using the Fabric client to create a user. Um, and we're still calling the en uh, the enroll um, from Fabric Client. It's still uh, more or less doing the same thing. Cool. Um, so awesome. So now we've done we've run npm install. Um, now the first thing that we do in this. So again, we're using this Fabric Network API, and the first thing we do in this function is we uh, get the path to our wallet. And then we have to check in our wallet if we have this user one identity, which we don't at this point because all we have is this admin identity. So after we check that, we want to see if the admin exists in our wallet, which it does. Um, and then after that, we're going to use this admin identity. Um, hopefully we have it, which we do. And then we're going to um, get the certificate authority and get the identity. And then we're going to use that to actually register. So we're registering our user one and the role is a client, and we're using the admin identity to do so. And then we have this enrollment. Um, uh, we'll have, so that after we register, we get the secret, and then we'll we'll pass that secret in here, and then we get the, um, this, en this enrollment object will have our certificate and our keys, as you can see here. Um, and then after that, we're importing that into our wallet, and then we'll use this identity, the user one identity, to actually sign all of our transactions in the future. So let's go ahead and run the script. So we'll run register user, and then you'll see that we get a user identity. It should be a user one identity in here. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay. I don't know why that one wasn't there. Okay. So we got the user one identity. Um, perfect. So at this point, if we go back to the docs, um, we've gone through this. And at this point, we can query the ledger, so we can do node query. Um, and, and you can see here in the actual chain code, um, if we go back in the chain code and then go to Fabcar and then JavaScript, um, you'll see that the init ledger creates all of these uh, cars. So we have a um, um, uh, Brown, Holden, Bariana, an Indigo, Tata, Nano, Fiat. So we have all these cars. Um, so if we do a node a query, we should query and get all these cars back. So as you can see there, we have the Holden, uh, Bariana, uh, we have the uh, Nano, uh, Tata, 
Um, that's what you see here. So that's all, that's what's actually happened because we've already written this data to the ledger when we uh, instantiated the contract. So at this point, we've queried it. Um, what we can do now is we can go ahead and um, we can... So, so again, um, this query uses the evaluate transaction um, API, and that API is instead of sending the transaction to the ordering service, it just simulates the transaction and actually never sends it to the ordering service. And that's what's different between that's how we actually query um, is we were essentially um, evaluating the transaction but never sending it to the or ordering service. Um, okay, so let's so this is our uh, smart contract. You'll see that. Um, it is. Um, it, it does look a little bit different than before. Um, so before the smart contract looked a little bit different. Let's go ahead and find it. Um, chain code, Fabcar, node, um, Fabcar. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, the, it it does it did look a little bit different, but we still have that same init ledger. Um, so if we look at the actual n number lines of code. Um, this is a little bit um, less lines of code as well. Okay, so we've invoked that contract. Let's go ahead. We've queried it. Let's go ahead and um, we can do we can update the ledger now. So we can do invoke.js. So uh, here we can do a create car um, in invoke.js. Um, so we'll do that now. So in here we can we're getting the uh, contract fab car. We're doing create car, so we can say uh, Horia is the is the owner of the car. We'll do node invoke. Um, cool. So now if we query for the car, um, we should be able to, uh, if we query for car twelve. Um, query car. And then I'll do uh, car twelve. Um, let's see what happens here. Oh, uh, no, node query. Cool. Um, so yeah, we can see the owner is me, and then we have the Honda uh, Accord. Awesome. Okay. Um, so the last thing that I want to do is I just want to walk through the logic of invoke. Um, so the first thing we do here in evoke again is we always um, we always have to get an a signing identity for the transaction. Um, so what we do is we get that uh, user the user one identity um, from our wallet. Um, so we basically check if that user exists. Um, if it doesn't, then you know it tells us to run register user. Once we have that identity, um, we're able to connect uh, to the network, and then this uh, CCP uh, is our actual connection.json. So we're using that to connect to the certificate authority, the peer, the orderer. After that, we um, in our script, we started a my channel um, uh, channel. Um, so that's what we're getting. So then we're connecting to that network. And then when in our uh, start fabric script, we actually created this um, fab car. Uh, you, can you can see here, we created this fab car. Um, um, actual smart contract. Um, so that's what we're we're doing in Invoke is we're getting this Fabcar contract, and then that contract um, has all of these, you know, has all these different functions in it. So again, um, if we go into our Fabcar, we see all the functions: create car, query car, um, init ledger, um, and you can see it's called Fabcar as well. Um, yeah. So that's more or less it. Um, so again, the main the main things that I want you to understand from this um, from this video is is this new programming model. So essentially, we have the 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 main components are the start fabric script. So if we actually go into the script, we can see you know we're creating the chain code. Uh, we're, we're creating or installing the chain code. And um, where's my channel? Um, and then we're cr we're instantiating this chain code on this my channel, um, and then invoking um, invoking the chain code as well, and we're calling this init ledger. So that's kind of what starts everything. And again, before that, we have to uh, create these Docker containers. Um, 
Um, so that happens as well in the script. And then um, the biggest difference in from invoke and query, so you can see invoke looks pretty similar to query. Um, it should, yeah, it's almost the same thing, but the only difference is that we call contract.evaluate transaction versus contract.submit uh, transaction. So submit transaction um, is actually updating the ledger. Um, so yeah. Um, so one last thing before I head out, um, I want to show you the actual documentation. Um, so again, um, it, sometimes it is a little bit hard to find, but it is at Fabric SDK node, um, release 1.4. You can find everything here. I'll have this linked in the description. And Fabric Network is kind of what we were using, which is this new programming model. Um, and it shows you kind of how to connect to the gateway and how to um, create transaction. Um, so we use the contract class and then we did this uh, evaluate transaction and then we did the submit transaction. So again, if you want to find all the, the different APIs and, and documentation, I'll have this linked in the description. Hopefully you found this useful um, and I hope to see you next week. Please go ahead and give me some topics to, to cover and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye.